winter camping in a hot tent going to meet Ricky. The symptoms of pancreatic cancer, I mean, they don't really stand out initially. Didn't think much of it. Metastatic abdominal cancer. Still doing it, he's still getting out there. He is a tough dude. out there about to go out and do some winter backpacking more specifically some winter camping in a hot tent um, starting this video out not at a trailhead like I usually do but right here in the vehicle gassing up the reason is things are a little bit different for this one I'm about to go pick up my friend Frank who's been in some of the other winter videos I'm gonna pick him up and then I'm actually going to meet a pretty cool dude named Ricky hello everybody I'm here in my front yard. It's a big rock. Woo! <laughs> well, we've arrived at the top of Bond Cliff. Woo! Who I actually met through the channel, and he lives down near the Appalachian Trail Corridor in Virginia. He said he's got a hot tent, and we got to talking, and he invited Frank and I down. So he's gonna kind of show us the ropes. I've never used a hot tent before. Um, so I'm pretty excited for that. Just kind of waking up. Woo! <laughs> I caught myself this morning. I actually woke up and almost had a little bit of a pity party for myself because I woke up with a head cold on the day of the trip. But then I realized, as you'll see later in this trip, that that's pretty ridiculous. I should probably suck it up because the way that I met Ricky, or I should say the way that I began talking to him originally, was to raise awareness for something and well Ricky's situation is he actually is undergoing actively uh, once a week I believe chemotherapy right now and he is still trucking still out there and backpacking um, so when we got to talking he we were talking about he wanted to raise awareness um, for pancreatic cancer because in Ricky's case um, he was misdiagnosed a couple times, couldn't figure out what's going on. We're gonna meet him and get all the details of that as we go backpacking, but basically it took a while and then eventually he was told he had stage four pancreatic cancer. And like I said, he's been doing the chemo and everything, but he is a tough dude. He's still doing it. He's still getting out there. He said that he um, is actually off from chemo this week. He's gonna be in between cycles. So it seemed like a perfect opportunity. We're gonna head down, meet him, and uh, see what this hot tent's all about. It's apparently made out of titanium uh, and should keep us warm at night uh, in the winter. So anyway, I'm gonna pull the pump out here, pick up Frank, strap a sandwich, get it while you can in the north. All right, we're good. Get back on the road, then we'll get about six hours of driving in and start this adventure. Frank. Nice to meet you. Ricky, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Hey, how's it going, man? I thought you were like 6'7 or something. No. <laughs> Don't believe all the jazz on the comments. Uh, four foot right? two. <laughs> well, this is it. I'm going to do it, huh? actually made it to the trailhead. <laughs> Got the gear and the super van here. There's the pack. There's part of the tent. Plus we got a tarp for the ground. A whole bunch of other stuff. Definitely not packing light, but that's all right. I guess I should do introductions. We got Frank. We got Ricky on board. We got Mark, hey. Tracy, Ricky's dad somewhere over here. What's going on? We're just uh, reluctantly putting some packs on and I guess we'll hit the trail. What's the uh, trailhead we're at? Mount Pleasant. All right. George Washington National Forest. As he emerged. <laughs> yes, as, he, as he's birthed like from Jim his uh, buff. Right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very similar. 
All right. Nice. All right, old hotel trail. I'm gonna roll my sleeves up. Already. You're already getting warm. Yeah. All right. I can walk another 40 or 50 feet before I have to adjust my. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> There's a little fog down there. I was going to say, you can see a trap down in there, too. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I think that's the cardinal right there. Okay, I remember you saying that on the email. And then straight across is the priest, I think. That way. That might be main top over there to the left. Yeah, maybe. Yep, all right. steeper getting up there now getting level with those other mountains I like how it's opening up though yeah it's pretty cool I didn't know this was here like I was in a second hike from north and we just kind of like busted out of trees and I was like wow is there a name for this bald or cold mountain or cold mountain that's two names I call it cold there's Mount Pleasant popping up over there I guess we're getting we're getting towards it, elevation-wise, that is. You see what I mean by just flat over there, man? Oh, after this. Oh, that's really cool. We thought it was one of your outskirts, you'll find a little camp spot. Especially a deer. That's awesome. A little view back there, too. Oh, there's a lot more clouds over there. No, I think I think we're level with it right now. You know what? It's a really good spot. Mm -hmm. it just keeps unfolding. This is the first place Mark and I hiked together. Cool. Yep. That was a good day. It was a real good day. It was socked in, but it was a good day. We were like in the clouds. According to my GPS, so we're basically kind of doing a U-turn. So we're facing down there, and we're gonna go up. I'm assuming, because it's swing back down. Right, and then around, around, and then, yeah. Bottom of the yeah. Unless we're going up again. Yeah, did we lose a lot of elevation? Go, you go dip we're down and then right back up? Drop down in the river bottom and then go back up. Okay. Probably a thousand feet. Okay. All right. From the parking lot to the top of the mountain, this is about a 1,300 foot climb. Okay. So we're basically going to go probably yeah. close to starting elevation and, and then back up. About 600, 567. Because you said we're close to 4,000 right now? We're knocking on 4,000. We are at 3,955 now. Yeah, all right. So yeah, that would get you up there. The top of the mountain there is definitely over 4,000. That guy. Nice. Oh, no, this is dark. Look at that ridge. Yeah. Check out. There's clouds. How, right there is House Mountain in Lexington. Straight ahead. Yep. There's right. actually like two mountains, like one in front of the other. Yeah. With like a, with like a little like, like hollow or a call or a saddle in between them. And there's a shelter there, it's really neat. Because the James River flows around that side of it. Few people traverse the lesser known trails around here. Wind is picking up and it is cold. Oh, chilly. <laughs> hey, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, there's snow falling over there. Well, I mean, I guess that's better than rain. It's much better. <laughs> I, I mean, snow just bounced right off you. Yeah, I'll brush that off. That's cool. Yeah. I think that might be Goshen Pass through there. Like, I could be mistaken. Yeah, Ricky, I feel like the trail's over there. <laughs> I said, I feel like the trail's over there. All right, we're trusting you. This is where the bears drag the bodies of unsuspecting hikers from Delaware. Oh, no. Oh, good. Oh, this is a cool little area. Oh, another wall, too. I haven't seen these walls around here. I guess old property lines, like way back when, before it was public land or something. I don't know. When we were driving in, we saw them too. Yeah, it's a cool little spot. The lunch sounds good too. Got our first flakes. Well, I got my usual ramen, but I feel like I feel like you're out doing me, Ricky. <laughs> Some bow tie pasta. Oh yeah. And what you got? Pesto over there? Yeah. Homemade. 
And some tomatoes? Basil, kale, and pine nut pesto. Oh, Lord. Wow. That's pretty impressive. If you're gonna eat fresh organic food, you might as well make it taste good, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Tomatoes. Okay, it's better before, but. And some pesto. That is some pesto. Looking good. It was fun to cook something fresh on the first night. Yeah, man. What for lunch? And you do what? Uh, no sugar, right? No sugar. And you stick to all organics? Yep. If, Just for the sake of my liver, I think. So it is, seems like a good idea. Is the is the no sugar thing, is that a requirement, a chemo, or is that just something you found? Um, based on my research, one of the one of the hallmarks of cancer is that the cells stop respirating to produce energy. Okay. And they start fermenting sugar to produce energy instead, which is wildly inefficient and uses a lot more sugar than conventional respiration. So by eating a lot of sugar, you're providing the cancer with all the sugar it needs to permit it for energy. Okay. So by not eating as much sugar, your body still produces glucose off the food you eat to nourish your muscles and cells and everything. Gotcha. But there's less of it for the cancer to use. So I've decided to cut back on sugar as a result. Makes sense. Now, any doctor or nutritionist or whatever, 99% of the time you ask in a hospital if they if they think that sugar feeds cancer, yeah, they're gonna tell you no, but they're also gonna have a bunch of insure coupons at the desk <laughs> yeah. because uh. they want you to buy insure, which is also loaded with sugar. Because when you buy insure, you're supporting the Department of Agriculture and the doctors and the pharmaceutical company and just yeah. keeping everybody happy except for yourself. So. Take, take what you hear from them with a grain of salt because they may not have your best interest at heart. And your pesto pasta looks a little better than sure too. Yes. <laughs> like the, those, those drinks yeah. like I gave Frank, those are way better than Ensure. How? Boom. Looks good. Now since these tomatoes have been aged a little longer than I thought <laughs> yeah. at room yeah. temperature, I don't know that I have a need to no, simmer I, them anymore. I think they might be ready to go. It's perfect, perfectly saucy right there. Yeah, look at that goodness in there. Pesto is just like a beautiful thing. Snow in there? Yeah, man. It's that snow we're getting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is pesto pasta above 4,000 feet on a mountain. Can't argue with that. It's organic and gluten-free and nutritional and all that good stuff. Three o'clock. Uh, Had a nice lunch break. I think the decision has been made to bushwhack this way, right? Yep. Just kind of yep. straight down. Pretty much following the rock wall. Oh, okay. Yes, we got a rock wall. We're just going to follow it down. All right. Sounds good. It'll cut some mileage off. Whoa. Uh oh. The wall's crazy. Somebody put a lot of work into that. And now no, almost nobody ever sees it. Unless you're, unless you're crazy like us. That's part of the fun of being crazy like us. You get to see uh, mysterious rock walls. I live for mysterious rock walls. That's right. That's really the only reason I made the trip. There's what? Let's see this rock wall. Burl action. Oh yeah. You got some burl? Nice. Water. Yep, I hear water. Yeah, there's Frank, you got blue blazes. You see that tree down here? Back to the blue blazes. Didn't take us too long to get down that. Five yeah, 45 minutes. Yeah, 45 minutes. With refilling water. Yeah, with a water break. Got some nice cold fresh water back there. <sighs> Alright, so apparently we should be from what Ricky, Mark and Tracy tell me. Should be right around the corner here basically. And uh See what it looks like. Pine needles underneath your feet. 
Feels pretty good. Right. It's cool with the grass. Yeah, I like that. So, as you can see, beautiful camping area here on the hotel trail. And we are not good enough to the top of Mount Pleasant today. Nope. We're uh, relaxed and enjoy ourselves here while we actually have some daylight. See how this hot tent works? I'm excited for that. But look at this. Looks like it goes pretty far too. Yeah. Take the pack off, right? I'm assuming this is it. Yeah, I say we call this base camp. That's some nice grass. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. This is like luxury. Yeah. Another giant tree? Yeah. I mean, I can, I'm gonna go have my own village over there. <laughs> oh yeah, if we get in a fight, you know what I mean? <laughs> wow, this is beautiful. Yeah, like I said, you don't really need an air pad for so much. You know? Yeah, it is nice. Yeah, it's legit. Yeah, I guess we, I don't know if there's any level ground. Maybe we can get that tent somewhere. All right, let's go back up the hill. But no, that's where we came from, man. Can we go back the way we came? Yeah, we can go up that if you want, because this doesn't look like it's really ideal for tents. Yeah. You see that crop in the rocks right there? Is that little hot point? That's where we're. Oh, yeah. Where we came from. Oh, man. That's a hell of a hill, dude. Are you guys going that way? Yeah. All right. <laughs> here you go. Yeah, I'll go that way. This is incredible around here. How much, how much there is to explore? first found this place i like would like stay up at night looking at maps of this area just looking at like, satellite images i can hike here and oh man <laughs> yeah like, for hours i just like <laughs> look at those rock faces on mount pleasant i know I mean, yeah it does look cool we gotta, we gotta get up there man look at that goodness that's what i'm saying man i want to make a stealth, a stealth campsite up there <laughs> you need the nice uh you know, like the tent that hangs off the side. Yeah. You know, like you're going. Oh, a portal ledge. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, why not? They got them on Amazon, probably. Uh, I bet that's like $1,500. <laughs> you might not want to get cheap on this. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, there's the oh, opening for the stove oh, pipes. Yeah. We've got to basically square it up. So this loop right here is the one I need. You get a little bit tighter. Oh, looks pretty square. What do you think? Yeah. Yep. Ah. All right, now we can put the poles up and then we'll work on the vestibules. Cool. So how many poles? Deuce. He has to hold anything up? Yeah. <laughs> He's just going for it. Commando. Let's dive right in. Apex. Perfect height, too. So the tent body, you said it's six pounds, and then the stove is four. Four. Oh, so ten pound total, six and four. Yeah. Alux Outdoors Twin Shelter. Oh, it's starting to look like something. Need anything? It's not tricky, but was this too short? Like that. Now we stick out the vestibule. Good man. Compound. Okay, got some side ones too. Did it come with these big beefy uh, tent spikes or are those just your upgrades? I figured they would work better. Yeah, they don't look like they're going anywhere. They're in the source snow stakes. Okay, <laughs> that's what I thought they kind of looked like. It looks good. Hammock action or what kind of hammock? Hennessy. Oh, yeah, I'm not used to seeing a Hennessy that's smaller like that. I know, I got this and never even used it. And it was like, why didn't I get a war bonnet blackbird? And then I got a war bonnet blackbird. <laughs> really? Yeah. I get the hand-me-downs. That's cool. It looks oh, nice. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A whoopee hook action. I got like a rope weaving kit and got kind of into it and made all sorts of cool stuff. And then... Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. There you go. There it is. I'll take it up in 
Nice. Huh. You good over here? Good. Uh, all set. That wasn't bad to put up. Now we just check out the, um, see how the stove goes, which will go through here. Um, underneath of there is that little opening we saw. Right there. Caution, carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide's bad, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Nice. Yeah? Take a look. Okay, and then you got, so it's just, I got those little straps, Sean. Oh, gotcha. Right here? Yeah. Almost took that out. <laughs> so. Clip them now. If there's not enough, there's a little hook on the end of them. They're just there to like set up the geometry of the footprint. Oh, uh, okay. And then just a standard hiking pole yep. and the aluminum um, extensions. extensions. That probably doesn't weigh anything. That's sweet, man. Got a lot of room. That whole side opens up, it's like a door too. Nice. Yeah, this is cool. The, uh, the mesh room makes it a four person tent. So you can call your stuff in the vestibules too. Okay. So that just takes up mainly like the rectangular portion. Oh, uh, and then both of these ends would be yeah. sectioned off by the mesh. You got it. Gonna come in. There you go. Crash the party. Ugh. First time backpacking with this thing. So you tested it out like at a uh, car camping. Car camping. Yeah. Nice. This ain't so bad. No. Tension out of it. How's that one? You just slide it up a little bit. Yeah. Think, whoops. How's that look? I take great care of my gloves. Oh, is that the ones you melted yeah, today? Uh, really different oh, pair. another one. All right. It's always the middle <laughs> fingers. What's up with that? Uh, it's weird. Fucking tying knots. It's stylish. That's what it is. Great for determining wind direction. All right, so this is the, the stove comes out of the pack kind of like this. All right. So the top, the side, and in the side. And is it just little tabs that yep. kind of goes in there? It's kind of modular and it's kind of fits together. It does warp a little bit after the first time you use it. Yeah, but it hasn't really said. Understandably. Safe. Yeah. Oh, there it is. That it'll stay together while I put the legs on it. <laughs> That's the million dollar question. Oh man, I put the grate back in it. This ah. is not a licensed accessory. <laughs> oh no? no? That's your own addition? My own addition. And it just burns a little not, better, keeps it up off the bottom. I have not tried it yet, so it might work. Or we might <coughs> oh, okay. Burn it to death inside this tent. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not, though. Is it like a toaster oven grate? Yeah. Nice. Ingenuity. There it is. Oh boy. That's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna record the screwdriver with me. <laughs> All right, legs are on. Got the little door there. Uh, I'm gonna sit back and stretch yeah. my legs out. That's pretty cool. I put the freaking top on backwards. This uh -oh. is dry out the front now. It'll be all right. What do you do with those little guys? They hold the chimney into a Oh, shape. I gotcha. Now I'm starting to make a little sense to me. Hopefully I just uh, don't mind my crippled leg here. Uh, me to hold it down there. Oh wow, it actually stays. That's crazy. Okay. Like a professional the second time I used it. So this little thing here is kind of tricky. Okay. That scared the <laughs> shit. Like my head ripping the head open. Oh god. 
was like, oh. So this is the spark arrestor. Okay. And this is the flu. Oh. So you just slide the flu in and out to regulate your airflow. Okay. It's pretty ingenious how simple and lightweight that is. Yeah, that's cool. And then you were saying earlier, usually, or at least when you put it together before, you had the this in the back. I had the, the flu pipe in the back, but Should. due to my own carelessness, we're going to see how it works with the flu pipe in the front today. I like it. I like a little experimentation. So when I get this started, I kind of taper the bottom end that goes into the stove. Mm -hmm. And then once I get it in, then I taper the top end for the chimney so that it fits on easier. Got it. Yep. Pull a little ring down on there and boom. Let's see what it looks like from out here. Oh, that's cool. It's even taller than I pictured when I was in there. Yeah. Well, it's probably nice to keep the smoke pretty far away from me, right? Pretty cool. Now, I wonder, I mentioned it doesn't get very hot. You could probably loop some AM steel around it for like a guy line. Oh, just to really hold it in place. Yeah. Yeah. That thinks. Or you could do like a combination rain gap, rain cap with some eyelets in it for a guy line. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't think of a rain cap type thing. But hopefully that's not going to be an issue tonight. We're not going to have to worry about that tonight. Nope, no rain. Ton of rain last night when we arrived, but uh, rain <laughs> that's why we came out today. Oof, yeah. Last night was pouring, but today it's cold and dry, which is nice. Actually, I'm not sure what the uh, temp is so far. It's 37, and you said what, mid 20s? You're thinking it might drop into? Yeah, 20, 24, 25, I think. Okay. And you said you originally got this as potentially a sauna yeah, idea? I was thinking about doing a sauna because I was really reading a lot about like detoxification and stuff. Oh, time. okay. And I thought that this was, well, I mean, I eventually did buy a sauna and it cost a lot more than this tent and wood stove did. <laughs> okay. The sad thing is that I never even tried to use this as a sauna. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, now you got a cool tent though, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna keep us warm tonight, hopefully. In a tent like this, even if you do spill your water bottle, you can still sleep in it comfortably. It's just not that randomly and it has, it's not based on any sort of... Oh, that has nothing to do event. with... Maybe somebody else can at least learn from this? Yeah, um, so the top was frozen. I thought I had it on all the way. So once the water started heating the top and I had it in my bag, it completely emptied in my bag. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna see what happens. Uh, oh, we're getting a little wind. 506. Yeah, I'll start helping you. We'll gather some wood. Got a little something for later here. A whole loaf of bread. A whole loaf of sourdough bread. And some butter. And some cheese. And Ricky made some world famous uh, chili that he dehydrated himself, right? World famous is what I heard. Looking forward to it. All right, time to gather some wood. Nice assortment of sizes. Six. See, uh, Mark and Tracy got their, looks like a big, big Agnes. A little two person tent, not bad. And Ricky's dad in the hammock. Three of us, Ricky, Frank, and I will be in the hot tent. Good wind test. It's holding steady. You, you confident? Yeah. Looks good, right? It's got enough guy line. Uh, we got to guide all out. Dude, we can certainly make adjustments and it, I mean, it has no choice but to be stable. Yeah. The mm. chimney, I'm kind of thinking about that. So, I'm going to loop something around that and stabilize it. Yeah. Yeah, it's catching a little wind, huh? It is going. Hey, man. Little wet fire tablets here, a little, little bag, and they, they burn pretty good. We won't be seeing our breath for too much longer in here. That's awesome. It's growing it right on up out of there. Yeah, it's drafting good, right? 
A little mini pile of wood there. A ton, a ton more outside the tent. Yeah. We'll get probably all of this stacked up with little logs like this and we'll, we'll be 100% ready for like until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Awesome. Of comfort. I like it. We gotta take turns keeping this thing yeah, going. Yeah, we gotta, we'll, we'll keep it alive. The real trick is when you're in your down sleeping bag, trying oh. to stay awake and get the fire going again. <laughs> Just reach it over, trying to get it going. Without falling asleep yeah. before you get it to where you want it. Yeah. Because if you fall asleep for 45 minutes with the flu and the damper wide open, uh, yeah. You won't have any more wood. It just burns it right minutes. out. Yeah. And it'll be really cold. Nice. All right. It appears to be working quite well. It's going good. All right. So executive decision. Ricky's decided probably best to set it up the proper way with the flu yes. in the back. A proper way generally will yield you with the best results. <laughs> uh. In most scenarios. We wouldn't want to steer anybody wrong. No, we sure wouldn't. So we'll fix that up, and if you want me to fire you up with grilled cheese, I can do that. I know you got different, yeah, probably my, better my, bread and cheese, but I'll make it for you. Special organic bread is in my food bag in there. I'll get it in a minute. Okay, though. yeah, no. Super just whatever figure. you want. Thank you, Sean. I figure. It's very You're kind offering of the hospitality, I can at least cook for you. Yeah. Nice. All right, well. Next scene will definitely be this thing just purring along. Roaring without <laughs> a bunch of water vapor inside it. <laughs> Might actually want to close that just a little bit. That thing is raging, it sounds like. It is going good. So the flu? Yeah. Oh. Let's take this one down. I'm just... Actually, I'm go this way. Oh, take I with see. a little bit of weight to it here. So you just kind of close the uh, air holes. I closed it way too much. I think that's probably good. There we go. That is a fire. Yep. The side is red hot too. Living it up. Let me focus it a little bit. There you go. There we go. Oh, that's sharp. Breaks, man. Wow. You had like Hollywood on your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little projector on the tent. Hell yeah. Living a dream. Dude, why even go home? <laughs> <laughs> look, look above yeah. you, Frank. <laughs> hey, you just wake him up. <laughs> that is that's straight thugging, man. I don't even know. No, no. That's, that's, but I'm holding. I gotta figure out how I can put it somewhere and we can all see it. This is a dream. It's not real. That's pretty good. I mean, that thing is tiny too. Yeah, it's it the size of a soda can. That's crazy. Mission accomplished. Is this what this is for? Is this like a hood? Yeah, oh yeah. Is that what it is, really? Yeah, but you're kind of using it as a pillow, which is nice. Well, I didn't refuse. Oh, <laughs> that works too. Make some coffee. Double strain. <sighs> Dutch wear synthetic booties on. I'm liking these things though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, do we have something similar up in uh, New York? Um, Maybe Mike's. Mike had a pair. He has a pair of down ones that were really nice and expensive. Really <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, well, the you know, they're a little slippy, but they're water resistant, it seems, right. for walking around outside. But yeah. they're like two ounces a piece. They ain't bad for synthetic. I'm sleeping a lot. I know. Extra warmth. Well, that was 50 degrees in here. Yeah, it wasn't bad, though. That was pretty nice. The majority of the night. A lot. Our pipe came down. As you can see, I think the guy line we put up, Frank and I are thinking it popped off this morning because that uh, disconnected twice, so we gave up on that. Smoke is out. Yeah. <laughs> but it got us through tonight. Enjoy some coffee. Let's see where the day takes us.
Let's see what the full mega access is here. And you can really get some good access. <laughs> or shoot some sticks at yourself. That's awesome. Look at that. Hey, I mean, in nicer weather, you just use that as a wind block, be chilling. Maybe, maybe if, if I use it enough, yeah. it's worthwhile, I would invest in the, the screen room, the bug room for it. Yeah, to section it off. The bathtub floor and all that. That's cool. Yeah. Maybe for summertime camping. Yeah. That's to the old wing nut. <laughs> what? It didn't blow over till the morning, so that's good. No, it was nice. I mean, when it goes out, the temperature definitely starts dropping off sure, I mean, pretty quick. Extremely, it dropped yeah, 13, 13 I mean, I think we had it back down to 38, but then this morning when me and you woke up, it was 52 or something oh, wow. like that. Yeah. Not bad. No complaints on that, considering it was like 20 something out last night. Well, well, how cold was it when you first put the thermometer out here? Uh, the lowest I saw was. What, before I put it in there was 20, what did I say, 28 or something. It was, it was so I had, I'm sure it kept going down at least mid or low 20s. Yeah. So we had a good 30 degree, 30 degree difference in there. You know, there's enough room in here where you can lay like sideways. You could get four people in here sideways probably. Well, that's what I was you thinking. A, you can get a ton in there. <laughs> summer, summertime, yeah. Collect all the tent spikes. There's some commotion coming from, uh... Yeah, there's movement over there. Mark's camp side. Yeah, they're up. Uh... <laughs> it froze and expanded? No, I, I had it next to the fire. Oh. Uh... <laughs> but I had it a fair amount of ways, but this radiant heat, I looked at had the big bubble. Still holding water. Yeah. Actually, it holds more now. <laughs> yeah, I increased the capacity. It now holds a liter and a quarter. I got a way to increase the capacity water bottle somehow. Uh, let's put it by the fire. You want the ropes inside? Fishing. Together. Yep. Start it up. Uh, take that was quick. Got that bad boy packed up. All right. There it is. It's a nice kickstand. I thought there was like a foundation somewhere. I've never seen it. I don't know either. Scavenger hook. <laughs> so. Ricky was saying, he, uh, I guess, I don't know, how long ago would that have been? I Are imagine it was probably in the teens or 20s since the National Forest bought all this stuff up around that time. And there used to be a house? Yep, there was a, uh, based on my understanding of this area, there was a house up here a gentleman owned with these ornate grounds. Yeah, nice with area. All these beautiful oak trees and everything. And he had so many visitors at his house and it eventually became known as the hotel even though the house is not here anymore the the hotel trail still bears its name to this day thank you for joining us at this episode of fireside chats fireside history lessons with Ricky. slash the scavenger hunt little animal herd path well right here there's like a hole in between all the trees. Yeah. It's kind of level. Oh, that's a nice view of the mountains well, you think there'd too. be like rocks or something? Yeah. Some sort of foundation. You'd think. Well, I mean, it starts, starts going up back there. That's probably not yeah, it. Check it out. Hmm. My deer over here. Good eye, Frank. Like a while ago, probably. Oh, that's a fresher one. All these trees. Jeez. That's a good one right there. Yeah, I'd be interested to see the size of it. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see a common. I saw some uh, decent beds when I was walking around earlier. Right, here's some shine for you. Where's the distillery? Yeah. There's a little bit left in this shine bottle if you want some. 
I don't think I trust that. Collectible right there. Shine, but not a house. <laughs> Apparently there was a forest fire here about five years ago. That's what we've been seeing the remnants of, or evidence of. That's a good one there. These little scraggly weathered trees are pretty neat. Ah, uh, yeah, Sarah would love these things. The creepy trees. Found some rubs, some shine, and some wind. We'll have to discover the foundation of said hotel some other day. How'd you guys do warm for us? I stayed pretty warm. I tried to hunker down right here and, and point it into the wind, so it wasn't too bad, but I could never seem to get the vegetables like too, uh, too taut, so they're always kind of flapping a bit. This is what I got. Yeah. Time to pack up. Right? Yeah, that's our site. Yeah, it I is. looked over my shoulder and that the damn tent was down. I was like, oh, <laughs> we hurry up. It's about 12 now. Crack noon. Yeah. Crack, crack noon. Yeah, crack noon right here. Best you've ever spent another night out here, huh, Frank? <laughs> he's <out>. smiling today. <laughs> <laughs> he's so happy. Yeah, he's not Frank, sick today. He's, he's back. like, once is a story. <laughs> Twice is just a bad decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Where's my limit? It's one night. Tracy's not messing around, she's making us go. Before noon starts, two oh. in a row. Four minutes early. Here we go, it's back nice on it. My, my now longer leg is facing downhill. <laughs> part of the so it's, it's working with the grade? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Since my, since my hip's locked up, my right leg is longer than the left foot. Oh man. <laughs> how long are you, uh, how much of a break are you getting from the from chemo? chemo? Oh, uh, I do three weeks in a row and I got a week off. And that's this week, right? Yeah. So that really equates to like 14 days, well, yeah, about 14 days in between those two treatments. Okay. And then so back on. Nice. Especially since um, a couple of treatments ago, some of my blood work was kind of not really that great. So the doctor backed the dose off about 80%, to about 80%. Yeah. I feel so much better. Ah, uh, from having less of that it snapped poison. Back a lot faster. Yeah, it's awesome. Hopefully, it's still effective. And how long ago did they actually correctly diagnose you? Um, June, probably June fourteenth or fifteenth. They gave us the like definitive, like you have pancreatic adenocarcinoma and it's stage four. You know, di like concise diagnosis. Yeah, because I was kind of mentioning in the intro that you got kind of the runaround. Yeah. At least twice. The, the symptoms of pancreatic cancer, I mean, they don't really stand out initially. I mean, I started developing heartburn and losing weight and stuff. But, I mean, I was kind of trying to lose weight, so. <laughs> so I at first you thought. I didn't okay. notice it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the heartburn just got worse and worse. But I was thinking, you know, I've really partook in some spicy foods, like some really spicy foods that would like physically harm some people throughout my life <laughs> some... and I figured that maybe it had just caught up to me yeah and that ew, I was gonna have to just have to deal with heartburn like everybody else now so I didn't think much of it but it was only after like weeks and weeks and weeks of just everyday heartburn that you knew something was up and then I was starting to feel weak and almost blacked out a couple times and I guess it was just because my body just wasn't absorbing the nutrition it needed. Gotcha. My pancreas with that tumor inside it, blocking off some of the uh, ducts inside it, couldn't produce enough protease, amylase, or lipase to uh, digest my food. So I was just starving to death slowly Ugh. while I was still eating. Right. And I went to the hospital in Lynchburg. I won't say which hospital it is, but it is a hospital in Lynchburg, Virginia. Anyhow, I spent about nine hours in the emergency room there. I presented myself with uh, like abdominal pain, shoulder pain, which as it turns out, uh, stabbing right shoulder pain and upper abdominal pain yeah. is a hallmark of something being wrong with your liver or your pancreas, as, I, as it turns out. Which should have been a red flag. Right, but they... Uh... So they, they took my concerns and went with went in the heart problem direction with it. Okay. For some reason. You know, I'm 32. I don't really think that that would so be they a possibility based on my age, but that's what they did. The EKG, a chest x-ray, some blood tests. Just focusing on your heart. 
brought me back in her room, had me, had me put a gown on, did another EKG, just in time to tell me that I was in perfect health and that I needed to leave. Your heart rhythm's fine, you know? Right. I'm like, this seems like an abdominal issue to me. Not so much, I mean. Or a GI or weight. something. I have, yeah. You know, I have heartburn that's persistent. It just really seems like a GI issue. I was really thinking I had ulcers or something at that point. Gotcha. Previously to that, I was uh, taking a lot of like ibuprofen and in NSAIDs for headaches and like like neck tension and stuff. Yeah. That was plaguing me. And I figured I'd just melted a hole in my stomach. Jeez. Anyhow, so two years ago, after a several day section hike on the AT, which I accepted some food from somebody who probably didn't have the cleanest hands, oh. I uh, had some abdominal pain. I went to the hospital and it turns out I had colitis probably from that. Oh. And uh, they did a CT scan while I was there and they noticed that I had some pulmonary nodules in my lungs, which oh. could be like pre-lung cancer type stuff. Okay. So, you know, I was there, I'd been there for nine hours. What's, what's another hour for a CT scan? So I was like, you know, hey, you know, I explained my concern to him. You know, based off of what happened before, I just kind of like to monitor that situation since it could develop into lung cancer. Right. And he kind of got, kind of lost his cool with me and he said, there is no cancer you have that we can detect today. <sighs> kind of, you know, he didn't quite yell at me, but he had a stern tone with, with his voice when he said it. Yeah. Like he had lost his patience with me or something. Well, this is the initial ER visit. Okay. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, obviously at that point I had metastatic abdominal cancer. If they'd done a CT scan, they just solved. based off of what I said, they would have found it. Right then. I would have been diagnosed like six weeks earlier. Oh, jeez. So, which I mean, I don't know how fast this stuff grows or how aggressive it is. I mean, it's, a, it's pretty aggressive, but I don't really know what different six weeks makes. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I would imagine that every day earlier, the better. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of went home. I was kind of disappointed at least something's wrong with me but if, if a hospital full of medical professionals tells you that you're in good health and is as sure about it as that doctor was you might you, you might listen to him yeah so for another couple of weeks i just toughed it out and took heartburn medicine as they had advised me including zantac which as we now know is a carcinogen that causes pancreatic cancer which may or may not have you know helped ease the process along or yeah maybe acted as a catalyst to make the cancer even more you know make its life even more easy on it you know right certainly wasn't helping so you know went home dealt with it a couple more weeks of suffering went to an urgent care clinic just because it was convenient and they kind of told me the same thing you know, just take heartburn medicine you know there's nothing we can really do doesn't seem serious we don't think you have ulcers blah 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 okay so you know a couple more weeks and that's when I was moving a piece of furniture and I almost blacked out and I was like, there is something wrong with me. There's no doubt about it. So I went to Charlottesville, Virginia to, to the University of Virginia Hospital. Okay. Which I should have done in the first place because it was only like 15 minutes further away than the, well, darn. the other hospital. But I went there, literally within like 45 minutes of being there, they had drawn some blood, checked it, some, some liver enzymes were off. Did an ultra scan, uh, uh, ultra scan, ultra sound, <laughs> ultra scan, yeah, and located. I, I mean, I didn't know what he's looking at, but he saw something that concerned him, and we went and had a CT scan done and metastatic abdominal cancer. Whew. Yep. If you look over here, you can see some more of like the old grounds around the uh, this estate. I guess you could call it. Yeah, nice view of the ridge there yeah. too. Pomp Pompey Mountain and Mount Pleasant on the right. Maybe we'll get up there. <laughs> How do we get up there? This is a power walk. So Ricky was uh, <laughs> thinking since we're going past the van, we'll, um, we'll kind of figure out what we're doing when we get there. But at the very least, dump a, <laughs> probably dump some of this gear off and uh, yeah. just power to, to something and see something. And then uh, Frank and I got to head home tonight. So to Frank go to work tomorrow. It, well, yeah. Frank's going to work tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, Frank's got a conventional job he's got to go, go to every morning. <laughs> hey, my desk is getting cold, man. Yeah. So, we'll get burgers tonight after some sort of hike after this and uh, get back on the road, but...
I'm getting a little bit of an appetite. You've got to show him's real favorite pastime, driving. Driving for long, course. long distances. Uh, the other thing that's neat is all the different little, like, ecosystems you see on this trail. Yeah, it really, yeah, you get a nice variety. It's like we're in Northern Europe now, all of a sudden. Look at all the, the burn marks on yeah. the trees. Yeah, all of them up about, like, four feet, three feet. I think we're, like, in the Pacific Northwest now or something. All right. Just totally switched. Cruise of the Sill. Yeah. Cheeseburgers. Did I hear somebody say cheeseburger? <laughs> I think in the, in the interest of allowing you guys to get home in a somewhat decent time, Yep. we should probably not try to do the other hike. I would say we'd be fine with that. We saw a bunch of cool stuff on this trip. So we could still do some more cool stuff around my house that doesn't take up a bunch of time. Yeah, no, I mean. We camped in a hot tent. That trail yesterday was amazing. Campsite was amazing. We have no complaints over here. It has been a blast. There's the uh, nice days. van right over there. When, uh, so when I'm not too. in such terrible shape, we'll have to go on a proper backpacking trip. And I will definitely do. Some miles. We'll definitely come back for that. Or meet you anywhere. Yeah. I just know what I'm, what I'm capable of under good circumstances. Yeah. No, we'll do it. A little disappointed. No, we'll do it. You, uh... You're kicking ass as far as I'm concerned. What is, uh, you got a YouTube channel of your own, don't you? Yeah, if you follow me over to Van Project, maybe become a fixture of my YouTube channel too, so. Oh, a little, uh, little van, uh, mod in the future? Yeah, the Camper Van Project is gonna be pretty interesting. That would be cool. There aren't very many all-wheel drive Astro Camper Vans. Nope, this thing. Uh, we drove over a good sized blow down tree yesterday in this and it yeah. did perfectly fine. The old Astro van. Luckily the rain washed it off for us. Yeah, it's Oh. There we go. There we go. Look at that. The RR Outdoorsman. <laughs> Boom. RR off the railroad. Shout out. Oh, now it's all making sense. I think Mark has a channel too. Yeah, yeah. We're the, uh, the Summit Bums. You can uh, find us on there. There'll be uh, hiking and. Uh, and uh, camping, car camping stuff, so nice. check out me and Tracy and what we do. Uh, we'll yeah. definitely uh, put some links in the uh, video description for that. Yeah, awesome. Ricky, do you have any, um, I'm going to put a link to your that article you sent me about some details, That's some nice more details you. on what you were uh, talking about. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So Thank we went him. from here? Here, came up here, turned it out here, and then we walked kind of down. Oh, uh, this was our bushwhack? Yeah. Uh, and down okay. here, I think, or maybe, maybe down to here. We okay. camped right about there. I okay. Or, no, we camped right here. So we turned back up to here. It was a nice trip. We were hoping to get up here, but yeah, that's alright. We're running out of time. We'll give it another shot sometime, for sure. <laughs> what does that say? White Honda Civic plate. You Woo! Ow! And left litter on trail. Say no to litter bugs. That's one way to call them out. <laughs> did you get that on film? Uh, yeah. yeah. Sure did. Make sure you include that. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, a pretty uh, good way to end it right there. Yeah. I do want to thank, but well, all of you, but really appreciate the hospitality and inviting me out hey, and man. showing us around. You can come down and check it out. Yeah. Frank and I had a blast. Um, at this point, I think we're all a little hungry. Yeah. So, you know the deal, we're gonna probably go replace some calories. Is it, is it hamburger time? Uh, is it, uh, oh, I forget. Panini time? Actually, for me, it's it's Kate Farms Nutritional Day. Oh, yes. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Oh, yeah, you're gonna be able to have, an, we gotta get you an organic burger. Yeah. Maybe we do know what we're gonna eat. So, until next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time. Boom. Oh. I really like that mountain.